Good day to the committee and attendees of SSD 22. We are here to present our paper, Off-Grid Photovoltaic System Power Output Medium Term Forecasting Using Artificial Neural Network. Okay, first we will get into the background of this research. Photovoltaic or PV is a technology that can convert solar radiation energy into electric power. The inconsistency of solar radiation can make power output difficult to predict. It's become very helpful to predict the PV power output using machine learning if PV is to become our main energy source. Uh, to put it lightly, for predicting PV power output, we can divide it into four types of class based on variance. This includes very short term, short term, medium term, and long term. Okay, uh, as we can see from the PowerPoint, these are the previous research that have been done in this field. By looking at these studies, most prediction of PV power output are still carried out short term. Therefore, the authors are interested in conducting research using two parameters and a longer prediction period. However, the one with a longer prediction period trends to be less reliable. Therefore, we settled on using medium term prediction instead to provide a balance between accuracy and period. And next is the primary application. For this study, we want to implement an artificial neural network with backpropagation algorithm in predicting PV power output for the next 11 days with errors value showing our models are better than the previous studies with figures of MAE, MSE, RMSE showing less than 1, and MAPE no more than 45%. This study is generally useful to help officers know when it is time for maintenance or repair of a PV mini grid and help prepare them at an earlier date. For system planning, we have a system block diagram which shows us that we have to input in solar irradiation and PV power output which are our dataset and parameter which we feed forward to our artificial neural network or ANN layers and then train it using back propagation to get our PV power output prediction results. For the image in system flow diagram, it's more or less the same with explanation showing that our dataset must be clean first before it can be used by our ANN and that if the ANN doesn't meet our required values, we must then return it until it meets our expectations. For our dataset, we collected data from within the Telkom University area for 42 days with retrieval intervals every 20 minutes from 7 a.m. until 3.40 p.m. using an off-grid solar panel system. The dataset was a time series which we separated into 31 days worth of data for training and 11 days worth of data for validation. In this ANN model flowchart, we more strongly explain the process of cleaning our data which involves reading the data, splitting it into training and test, and also normalizing our dataset. We also strongly explain that to build an ANN, we must determine the amount of input neuron, hidden layers, output layers, and the number of epochs. For our ANN architecture, we went with two input layers and one output layers, and we examined the results using one hidden layer and two hidden layers. We also need to see how many epochs was enough to let the model not underfit, neither overfit the training dataset, which can be seen in the results. Next was data acquisition, which happened to be before creating the model to obtain our dataset. For solar radiation data, we converted the analog signal for our light sensor into a digital signal in order to log our data, whilst we use a sunny portal to analyze the power output data. Next is methodology. Since the main focus of the experiment is our results, we'll only explain A and N briefly. A neural network is a machine learning algorithm comprised of a node of layers which we call neurons, which simulate how our nervous system works, basically passing on information from one neuron to another. On the screen, we can see how a neuron works. Just think of each neuron as their own linear regression model composed of input wave, an activation function, and output wave. So for our research, we do use a backpropagation method of ANN, which consists of three phases, which are feedforward, backpropagation, and changing weights and biases. To keep it general, an ANN consists of input layers, hidden layers, and an output layers. The information conveyed by all neurons in each layer is in the form of weights. The weights on each neuron are used random values. This random value is not very important at first, but they do eventually represent the correlation between each variables. So after knowing what layers are, we can now understand that these phases are the steps to show how a neural network optimizes itself to make proper predictions. The feedforward phase is the run of the network with weights to determine the output values that the neural network predicts. 
In the case of the first run, the weight itself is random. The pack propagation phase is when the network compares the output values to the real data and basically works its way backward through the network to find the error values between the prediction and data, which then goes into phase 3 of changing the old weight between each neuron to the new one based on the error values. Next is the error prediction evaluation metric, which are metrics that describe how good our predictive model is compared to actual data. For our research, we use four evaluation metrics. The first metric is mean absolute percentage error, or MAPE, which is an error value by calculating the percentage that deviates between the actual data and the predicted data. This is our main evaluation metric for our model since it simply explains the percentage of the error rather than the error values itself. The second metric is mean absolute error, which shows the average absolute error between the prediction results and the real value. The third metric is mean square error, which is calculated by squaring the data from the average error. And last but not least is the root mean square error, which is calculated squaring the data from the average error and then taking the root. In general, the lower the values of these metrics are, then the better our network is, which means that the difference between the prediction results and the real data is less. For result, the first thing in our experiments was to do multicollinearity testing. This serves to determine whether the PV4 output has a correlation with solar irradiation with 1 being the highest and minus 1 being the lowest. From the result, the correlation between the two variables were 0 0.53, which can be assumed that solar irradiation and power output in PV have a mutually influential correlation relationship. Next is the linearity testing, which is used to determine whether the dependent variable has an effect on the independent variable. In the study, the PV4 output is dependent, and solar irradiation is independent. The graph in our presentation show the point that tend to rise and are scattered near the diagonal line, which show that there is a correlation between our two variables. Uh, this next slide show the result of testing using one hidden layer, which we configured the amount of neurons from one neuron up to 24 neurons inside the hidden layer. This result showed the best result from 100 epoch for each different amount of neurons. Our best result using one hidden layer was with six neurons, showing a score of 27.132% MAPE result, which is what we will focus on for every testing. This slide show the result of using two hidden layers, which we configured several different amounts of neurons for each hidden layers. These were all the best result for 100 epoch for its configuration. However, the best result was shown using uh, 3 neurons in hidden layer 1 and 7 neurons in hidden layer 2, which show us MAPE of 27.106%, even better than our one hidden layer configuration. Uh, after determining the best configuration, we then trained the config configuration of 3 neurons in hidden layer 1 and 7 neurons in hidden layer 2, even more, resulting in us training for 200 epoch to get our best result yet at 190 epoch. With an MSE of 0.044, our MSE of 0.209, MAE, MAE on 0.166, and MAPE of 25.837%, making it our final result which we were satisfied with. Next up, we have the representation of the predicted data compared to the true data of our validation dataset. To the naked eye, this result looks very good with only new, with only few minor deviation and the error result only cements this statement. Our findings show solar radiation and PV power output have a fairly good relationship, starting from the correlation value reaching 0 0.553 and the regression plot scattered around the diagonal line with the linearity testing from the test carried out the best architecture for the artificial neural network model is hidden layer 1 as many as 3 neurons hidden layer 2 as many as 7 neurons and epoch as much as 190 with MAPE error values of 25.837% MAE of 0.166 MSE of 0.166 Zero forty four and MMSE of zero point two hundred and nine. To get prediction better prediction result, it would be better if other parameters were added such as temperature and humidity. Otherwise, in order to do for the model to avoid underfitting, 
data must be added to the data set. 